Here's a question. Why do you care about anything at all? Martin Heidegger had an answer. Care is what you are. Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome to Jack's Conceptual Stories. This first episode, I will introduce to you two of the German philosopher Martin Heidegger's concepts, care, or Zorge in German, and the ready to hand. These two concepts are intertwined with a philosophical and real-world story, a story I lived. This story can be summarized as this. Understanding care helped philosophers get out of their heads and into the real world. So first, what is care? Care, to Heidegger, is involving oneself with something in the world. He thinks we do this because, very generally speaking, things in the world bother us. We have problems with things. For example, if I really care about tennis, problems concerning my racket or Wimbledon are my problems. They're things I worry about. They're things I care about. Likewise, if I really care about, let's say, chess, I'm concerned about the latest competitions or I worry about the way I play. The problems of chess are my problems. Now obviously not everyone cares about tennis or chess, but everyone does care in general. We are all involved with the world somehow. This general sense of care is Heidegger's concept of Zorge. This German word means care, but it also means concern or worry. Our general care, concern, and worry about the world itself is our first concept for the day, Zorge. Now here's the general story with Heidegger's concepts. Heidegger claimed that they had been forgotten after centuries of science and philosophy. This included Zorge. The fact that we have cares, concerns, and worries he claimed had been forgotten. This might seem odd. You might ask, how might you forget this? You see, what Heidegger thought intellectuals had forgotten is what I myself had forgotten. You see, I was a really awkward, overly intellectual, and unathletic kid growing up. I hated PE. I didn't gain the confidence to ride a bicycle until I was 16. Sometimes, I would just stare at a bicycle, wondering why the pure scientific understanding of the cyclist or understanding the physics of the bike, why that didn't translate into knowing how to ride the bike. You see, I didn't really care about the bike in the way you should care about a bike if you want to ride a bike. I looked at the bicycle and saw it as a philosophical problem. When I saw a bike, I just saw how its gears worked. I didn't actually try to engage myself with the bike. I didn't want to care about biking. Now, a cyclist, on the other hand, sees a bike totally differently. They just hop on and go. In other words, I struggled with the fact that I could not think my way into knowing how to ride a bicycle. In forgetting this, Heidegger thought that philosophers and scientists had forgotten the way we relate to the world. A scientist, a computer, or me might have all the facts about bicycles and still not know how to ride a bicycle. Heidegger thought that cares, concerns, and worries was a clue to why we say we are in the world, not just computers or disembodied minds that think about the world. We are bothered by the world, and therefore don't merely think about it, represent it, or calculate it. Heidegger thought that the fact that we are in the world was incredibly unique. He wrote an entire book about it. Zorge helped him explain it. Zorge is not a specific concern about one thing in the world, but our general involvement with the world itself. But remember, we care because we have problems. Zorge is not specific, it is our general involvement with the world itself. Following this logic, this means that we don't just have problems, we have a general problem with the world itself. Life doesn't just have problems, living itself is a problem. As he put it, our existence is an issue for ourselves. Hence, Heidegger didn't just say that we care, but rather, we are care. This might seem odd, but think of an existential crisis. That is when this type of problem becomes apparent. Just as we noticed with my attitude toward the bike, he noticed a difference between the way a scientist or philosopher cares about an object and the way someone who uses an object cares. The way the philosopher or scientist relates to an object, to Heidegger, is by encountering it as what it is made of, what its substance is. The active person encounters it, on the other hand, as something usable, as a solution to one of their problems. For example, take this hammer. What does a scientist see when she sees a hammer? Well, she sees wood and metal. 
But what type of what metal? How do molecules and atoms of these compounds interact? And what even are atoms? But in this endless process of scientific decomposition, would we ever encounter the fact that a hammer is for hammering nails into wood? Or that people grab hammers in order to build bookshelves? Or houses? Or anything else they use these for? Heidegger makes this bold claim. No. Heidegger thinks that when we say we know what a tool is, we don't say that we know what it is made up of. We say we know what can be done with one. We don't care what this is made of. We care what problem we can solve with it. When we encounter objects not as substance or stuff, but as invitations to act, we encounter objects as what Heidegger calls ready to hand. This is the second concept of Heidegger's I will introduce to you today. Now this is how he introduced the concept. The less we just stare at the hammer thing, and the more we seize hold of it and use it, the more primordial does our relationship to it become, and the more unveiledly is it encountered as that which it is, as equipment. The hammering itself uncovers the specific manipulability of the hammer, the kind of being which equipment possesses, in which it manifests itself in its own right, we call readiness to hand. Let's unpack that quote. I have my hammer right here. Similar to what I did with my bicycle when I was little, I could just contemplate the hammer philosophically, asking myself what it is. But if I seize hold of it and use it, I learn what it actually is, because I learn how it can be used. Remember, what Heidegger thinks comes first, in his words, more primordial, isn't knowledge but problems. Therefore, knowing how to deal with problems comes before said solutions. How we learn to cope with our emotions, as babies for example, comes before we ever learn the scientific way of thinking. Even the philosopher and scientist care about their tools. They care about their measuring equipment, their concepts, the way their logic operates. They must learn how to use their tools before they can understand what their tools say about the world. Now we can understand my weird attitude as a kid. Before I encountered Heidegger, I basically thought of everything as stuff. The bicycle was stuff, metal and gears. I thought that if I just reduced the bike down to how its metal and gears worked, I'd figured out how to ride it. But Heidegger says that tools aren't stuff. To see an object as usable, to ask the scientific question of how it works, are two different questions. Similarly, as I stared at the athletes, I thought that they were basically doing physics really fast in their brains, even if they didn't know it. They were basically computers. Now, studying Heidegger has destroyed any sort of analogy between computers and the brain for me. One particular scholar of Heidegger, Hubert Dreyfus, who emphasized the ready to hand in his interpretation of Heidegger, used this concept to criticize early forms of artificial intelligence. And perhaps we can see why one would do this. I basically thought that if I knew all the facts about something, and a bunch of rules that I could use to apply to those facts, I could solve any problem. A more sophisticated version of this is what very, very early AI researchers thought. This is exactly what I was so anxious about. I couldn't find a set of rules that would guarantee that I could ride a bike. People might give me rules of thumb, but there would always be circumstances in which those rules of thumb would fail, and I would fall. There was risk involved, and that risk I hated. I hated that the bike was not immediately usable to me, not ready to hand, and I hated that I had to care about biking and actually try. Now this is only touching the surface of these two concepts, but I hope you might see how these concepts might help make sense of everyday life. These concepts help me personally to get out of my head and into the real world. Heidegger, in a way, wanted other philosophers to do the same with their own concepts. His main target was the legacy of Descartes, a famous philosopher, mathematician, and scientist. Now, other philosophers might scoff and have scoffed at Heidegger's broad claim that, our, that science and other intellectual inquiries caused us to forget various basic things. But I don't think that is too silly, because I think I lived it. <laughs>